Now that we're familiar with what normal and thrombus-filled veins will look like and have been warned about the potential pitfalls that may be encountered, we're ready to move on to the anatomy and external landmarks. During the 3D anatomy demonstration, we will identify the location of each major vessel in the limb as well as the major external landmarks that can be used to locate these vessels. The groin crease is the first external landmark at which the femoral vessels are easily located. We will begin here, not with the veins, but with the arteries. This is because the arteries are used as internal landmarks for location of the deep veins that travel alongside them. The common femoral artery is followed from this point until it becomes the superficial femoral artery, following the branching off of the profunda femoris artery, also called the deep femoral artery. The superficial femoral artery then continues down the medial aspect of the thigh until it penetrates through the adductor canal in the distal third of the thigh. The next important external landmark is found near the ankle at the medial malleolus. The posterior tibial artery passes here between the medial malleolus and the Achilles tendon. The posterior tibial artery then travels a course up the medial surface of the calf. From the posterior lateral side of the calf, the peroneal artery will be on a parallel course with the posterior tibial artery until they meet to form a common trunk in the proximal third of the calf just below the popliteal space. This common tibial and peroneal trunk becomes the popliteal artery and courses through the popliteal space. On the dorsal aspect of the foot is the distal landmark for the anterior tibial artery. This vessel takes an anterior lateral course up the calf until it penetrates between the tibia and fibula on its way to the vessel's connection into the popliteal artery. Now that we've identified the major deep arteries and external landmarks, let's fill in the veins that can be seen during the venous imaging examination. The common femoral, superficial femoral, and profunda femoris veins will run alongside the arteries. There will be one vein for each artery, although there may be a bifed superficial femoral vein in about 25% of the population. As we turn our attention to the calf veins, it is important to note that each of the major deep veins of the calf will be paired, that is, two veins for each artery. As the two posterior tibial veins combine to form one trunk in the upper third of the calf, the vessels become the common tibial trunk. As the two perineal veins combine into one vessel, they become the common perineal trunk. At this level of the calf, then, there will be one major artery and two large veins, the common tibial and common perineal trunks. As the vessels are followed further toward the popliteal space, they will combine to form the popliteal vein. The anterior tibial veins will lie next to the anterior tibial artery and will penetrate between the tibia and fibula, high in the calf, to connect with the popliteal vein. These are the major deep veins of the leg. There are, however, other important veins that can be imaged, so we will identify their locations as well. In the deep calf, there is a network of small veins called the soleal sinus veins. They will connect directly into the posterior tibial or the perineal veins. Another important vessel in the leg is the greater saphenous vein. It is a superficial vein, so it has no corresponding artery. It branches away from the common femoral vein just below the groin crease and takes a superficial and medial course through the thigh and continues on a more anterior course along the tibia through the calf. The external distal landmark for the greater saphenous is here at the medial malleolus. The greater saphenous vein passes anterior to the malleolus and continues on to the dorsal aspect of the foot. There are also connections between the superficial and deep veins. These veins are called perforators. These are especially numerous in the calf. To demonstrate the lesser saphenous vein and the gastrocnemius muscular branches, we will look at the popliteal space with the patient rolled into a lateral decubitus position. The lesser saphenous vein 
is a superficial vein. So, just as with a greater saphenous vein, it will travel without a corresponding artery. It branches from the popliteal vein in the mid-portion of the popliteal space and passes down the center of the posterior calf and passes its distal landmark between the lateral malleolus and the Achilles tendon before it communicates with a greater saphenous vein in the dorsum of the foot. At about the same level, where the lesser saphenous vein branches off of the popliteal, the gastrocnemius muscular branches leave the popliteal vein as well. They are small paired veins traveling with a very small artery. They drain blood out of the gastrocnemius muscle, so they will travel on the lateral and the medial side of the calf. So here we have all of the veins that will be encountered during the lower extremity venous imaging examination. Now we are ready to begin the examination itself.